Hello, people on YouTube watching my video. I hope you're feeling good. And if you're not, that's that's okay. Thanks for watching. I hope I can make you feel better, help you feel better. Um, I'm in my room, distracted by a woodpecker on the eucalyptus tree outside of my window, but that's okay. Woodpeckers are beautiful. They have red on their head and black and white stripes or some kind of dots on their back. Really pretty. Maybe I can find a picture of uh, what I'm talking about and then just insert it into the video. I'm going to do that and I'm going to remain confident that that's going to happen so I'm going to say hey look at this woodpecker. Sweet. All right. The reason I'm making this video is because I want to read you something that I read today um, written by one of my favorite spiritual teachers. I was going to say spiritual and philosophical teachers. Um, spiritual teachers, Joseph Campbell. If you are unfamiliar with Joseph Campbell, I highly recommend you type him into the search, um, either Google or YouTube after you're done here, and check him out. He's no longer with us in his human form, but um, when I see videos of him speaking or in interviews, especially the one with Bill Moyers, uh, he just feels like he's my grandfather. Or something. He's so charming and such a good man and such an integral part of the growth of so many of us. So I honor you, Joseph Campbell. So what he wrote, and by the way, he, um, talks mostly about mythology and studied how cultures all around the world from different beginnings of civilizations had such similar creation myths and mythologies on the hero's journey and things like that and how wonderful it was that there's this sort of innate knowing across the world of the processes of being human um, in this existence, in this, in this life, in this way of living. And by tapping into it, you know, back in the day, when civilizations were just starting, there weren't so many distractions as there are today. So people who spent so much time contemplating and feeling into the world around them were in tune way more than the majority of the population is today. So how cool was it that so many of the stories, whether it be from a tribe in Alaska or a tribe in the Philippines or somewhere in India, South America. A lot of their creation stories and myths tie so well together and relate so well together and they didn't have phones to ask. Hey Joe, I'm writing a story. Let's collaborate. No, they tapped in a different way and they could feel they could feel the same things. And um, I hope we get back to that soon. I know that there are so many of us that can tap in and be connected to the other realms that are happening at the same time and be confident in that but I 
think it's still a while before the majority of us are there together, but it's happening. It's happening right now. It's so exciting. That's why I jumped back up on the YouTube talking wagon because I want to be a part of it. Anyway, getting back to what I wanted to read, um, Joseph Campbell says, and this is from a book called Reflections on the Art of Living, which is in itself a beautiful title. But what he wrote is, the goal of life is to be a vehicle for something higher. Keep your eye up there between the pairs of opposites, watching your play in the world. Let the world be as it is and learn to rock with the waves. Remain radiant, as James Joyce put it, in the filth of the world. So I just want to go through because I, I love this excerpt and it resonates so deeply with me, so I'm just gonna have fun going through it piece by piece. So the beginning, the goal of life is to be a vehicle for something higher. From my experience, I definitely feel this and I have since I was a little, little girl um, when I got into drawing and my imagination, I could feel that it wasn't just coming from my little body, that I was aligning with something super magical. And it was bliss for me to just be in that space because I was filled with love. Um, I was in my room a lot by myself as an only child with my door locked, sometimes with a dresser in front of it that I had pushed so that no one would come in because the adults in my life at that time were very dangerous to me and my peace and world of, of love and bliss. Um, so I really got to experience what it means to be a vehicle for something higher. And now I'm a total advocate in the art of living, um, an advocate for being a vehicle for something higher, for, for being led by an inner compass that is attached to a higher vibration where you open your heart and you begin to operate from love instead of fear and you take yourself out of the game of society and capitalism and fear and judgment and you are existing in a, a softer realm where you can experience the pulls and the messages and the creation that comes through you from, from a divine place. The next uh, little paragraph, keep your eye up there between the pairs of opposites watching your play in the world. So I take this to mean Keep your eye, or I could say, keep your foot, one foot there and one foot here. One foot grounded on earth and one foot balanced in the realm of spirit and the unified fields and love. To stay balanced between those two worlds is a special life and it's allowed for you to do this 
so that you can experience something so much richer than you may have experienced before by only having both feet down here in this world instead of one foot there and one foot here. Sometimes you can have both feet here in the realm, the higher realm, and you're unable to interact and to coexist with your fellow humans because you're just so out there and uh, you all of a sudden don't even know how to use your fork or drive a car. So it's great to have a balance. And that's what I'm learning in this art of living, how to integrate the experience that I have here and living in society. Let the world be as it is and learn to rock with the waves. And in Buddhist philosophy, they talk about equanimity and how to be like a boat in the ocean, constantly moving but never sinking. The waves go up and down of life, of experiences, however you can remain balanced within a place in your knowing, in your heart, that this too shall pass, that there will be another experience and another experience and another experience and to not get swept away in those experiences, whether it be suffering or ruminating on something that happened to you at work or getting caught up in a strange interaction that you had with a friend or anything. To allow yourself the credit, the love, the respect, the honor of your miraculous existence here in this body, in your vehicle, to honor that to stay in love and in awareness without getting rocked. When you get rocked, you are, are lost. You've temporarily lost the plot and you're spinning in a samsara of your own creation. So there's a way to just remain in equanimity and things feel a lot easier. Days go by feeling more fulfilled. And there's a trust that you build and you start to experience and your body believes it too. And it kind of sets it off in motion and helps steps in from a different place. So pretty soon you don't have to worry so much about worrying at all. It's just really easy to stay in that place. And then the last part is remain radiant as Joyce puts it in the filth of the world. There is so much going on right now in our world in this human civilization. What we've done to nature, what we're doing to all of the different species of animals, how fast they're disappearing, how fast the homeostasis of our planet is changing, how much more fear there is, how much more people are acting from that fear. It's really important, however, to stay lit to remain radiant, to remain a tall candle, a tall lighthouse, so that others 
can still see something shining. They may not be able to stop and smell a rose, but they may see a person in the store and lights coming out of their eyes and they feel attracted to them and there's just something safe and warm about their presence. And that is comforting and that is a reminder and that is a responsibility that we have, especially if we are awake. And I know you are. It's our responsibility. Thank you so much for watching. And I do apologize about the hum in my laptop and the poor sound quality. <clears throat> make it more technologically savvy as my channel progresses but for now thanks for fumbling through along with me and have some cilantro I'm sending you so much love and support and get in touch